Gino Di Campo. How are you? Ciao, Bella. Ciao, ciao. Come stai? Yeah, uh, come stai? Fantastic. Very good, Gino. I'm happy. Very good. Yes. Very you good. Come on, stay. You're right. Yes, everything's brilliant. Now I've got to ask you guys about uh, your school days. Any teachers there that inspired you that you can remember? I was very fortunate. I had a domestic science teacher mm -hmm. who was thin as a rake, as old as the hills, spinster, choir mistress, Elsie Bibby. Lovely lady. She loved me to death. Oh, wonderful. She helped me great. She was wonderful. Yeah, great. What about you, Gino? I had the um, because I did the catering school and mm -hmm. I had the head chef of the school. Head chef for the school, yeah. and uh, he, he was um, very, uh, very inspiring. Inspiring? Yeah, yeah inspiring. Yeah. Inspiring. Like a church. Okay, very inspiring, yeah. and I really his name was Nino Bonocore. I'll never no. forget. Nino Bonocore. Nino Bonocore. Ah, he very yeah. fantastic guy. I think I look back. I think of Mrs. Parker or Mrs. Wheel at my primary school, secondary school. There was uh, well, John Clegg. Hey, uh, hope you're well, Mr. Clegg. It's funny <laughs> how we go that route, isn't it? We've got two teachers on the program today, ladies and gentlemen. Both of them teach in a boys' school. Let's find out more as we welcome from Oxford, Kirsty Penny. <laughs> Love Italian. Thank you. Come and meet Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Sweet that, yeah. Mm. So, where did you teach then? Uh, I spill the beans. My teacher at a boys' school called mm -hmm. St. Brian's School. It's in. St. what? St. Brian's. Good mm. lord, I thought she was in Brian's for a minute. <laughs> well, maybe you could be a saint one day. Yay! Well, it's not tomorrow. <laughs> and what's, what subject do you teach? I teach English. I also teach leisure studies. Mm. And the boys good? They give you back something? They reciprocate when you're giving out all this positive yeah. vibes? Yeah. yeah, the boys are on the whole very, very good. Yeah, I enjoy lovely. it. OK, let's see what type of shopper are you. And we'll be talking about what's uh, the advantages and disadvantages of working in a boys' school okay. a little bit later on. Yeah, give it a good old shake, Kirsty. Let's, let's have a look at what we've got in there. OK, right, what have we got here? Oh, is that um, oh, chorizo okay. sausage? Mm -hmm. More chorizo. And mm -hmm. um, for Sarah, because Sarah's Spanish. Ah, right, that's uh, the other lady that's coming on at the moment, yeah. Um, chickpeas, because mm. I love hummus. Also, mm. chickpea curry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Somebody just tapped me on the shoulder, was that you? And uh, puff pastry, because I don't really cook with pastry, so I thought it'd be good. Yeah, looking for a bit of inspiration. Yeah. OK, sugar snap, peas, onion and tomato. How much did you spend? Oh, £4.71. That's perfectly all right. Then you're allowed up to £5. A good old classic bag here. What about Brian? What do you think of it? Well, the only problem is... It... I'm not good at opening tins, so if you can open the tins, we'll oh, be fine. Well, that's exactly. lovely. Oh, Thank, you. Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, great food, as long as you can get into the can. Well, that's very nice of you, Brian. OK, back to meet your mate. Excellent. You guys like hanging out, don't you? We're quite different. <laughs> yeah, you're very, very different indeed. She's also from Oxford. Please welcome Sarah Mora. La Española. La Española. Come say? Benissimo. OK, Where's so, that? well, there you go. The, the, having this lovely conversation Don't here. Don't worry, eat, eat the fruit, fruit and veg. Fantastic. Now, you used to be... Uh, a, a, used to live in Spain, yeah. and you taught English in Spain. Now you're over in England teaching Spanish to the English. Yeah, sure, bro. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. How's that going? You enjoy that? I'm loving it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's so special about Oxford, then? Why Oxford? Why did you choose there? No, because I got the job there. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they offered me the work. Yeah, All exactly. Right, then. Tip out your bag. There you are. OK. Ooh. Oh, OK. Now, tell us what you brought along, then, Sarah. Well, I've got clams, because uh -huh. I, oh, yeah, yeah. I love seafood. And um, where I come from, the Basque country is staple food, so we mm. only... Well, San Sebastian around Yeah, that's, that's it. That's yeah, it. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Goat cheese, because it's my favourite cheese. Mm -hmm. I love the taste of it. And then, Please. this is because of Gino, I thought yeah. pasta, let's have pasta, because it goes well Thank with you. everything. That's Excellent. It. Oh, fantastic. Mushrooms and spinach, yeah. how much did you spend? £4.85. That's brilliant. You've both done very good shopping there, under £5. What do you think, Gino? Clams, is that up your street? I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you too. Yeah, Let's I really, really. Uh, this, this is fantastic. We got the pasta, we got the vongole, the goat cheese. We can do a lot of things. Oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> you two are going to get on fantastic. But <laughs> what about Brian and Kirsty? Let's find out what you're going to cook for her. Well, it's obvious on this side we've actually got to do uh, a sort of a pizza because we're mm. not Italian. <laughs> so, actually, we're going to make a little tart like a pizza. We'll use the tomatoes, a bit of uh, yoghurt and mustard and haritho mm. on the puff pastry. We'll make a little, um, like a cassoulet, so a stew with chickpeas and tomatoes. Then we make a chickpea curry, as the lady wants, so we've yes. got all that sorted yeah. out. We'll do a little hummus. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just, just boil those in water, then just into water and into butter and chopped mint, so you can just 
suck them through that. Be even better. And if you've got anything else left, oh, we make a little turnover as well. I don't know how much puff pastry is in there, but if you've got plenty, one tart and some little turnovers. Anything else left, we bung it on in a frittata and just cook it over. <laughs> a homelet, so that's good. Yeah. What do you think? Sounds amazing. Okay, looking forward to seeing that. Thank you very much, Chef. Oh, your turn, Sarah. Let's find out. Gina. Okay, Sarah doesn't like spices okay. because it makes it hyper. So <laughs> no spices, otherwise she can start to jump up and down. Yeah. So we're true. gonna have linguine con vongole with a little bit of garlic, with a bit of spinach, Italian classic. Then with the other linguine, I'm gonna make a, a gratin with the shallots, the uh, goat cheese and the mushroom. Mm. Then we're gonna make a nice fresh starter, which is a, a lemon spinach with a marinated mushroom and grilled uh, goat cheese on top. Mm. And then we're going to make some clams, kind of a clam soup in tomato sauce. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I got time, I make an egg on toast. And where, where, is the, toast. where does the yeah. tomatoes come from then, Gina? Tomato paste in the lava. Oh, tomato paste. All tomato right, paste, then. yes. Uh, tomato paste sauce. Fair enough, you never know, dude, ladies and gentlemen. They really utilise the lard as well. But they have 20 minutes when I say, ready, steady. Cook. cook. Okay, up and away we go. Now, just look at these ingredients. The chorizo sausage here. Brian's going to combine that in lots of different ways. A bit of a curry. Another one's going to be cooked down with the tomatoes, the chickpeas. We're going to have these uh, lovely sugar snap peas. Just toss a little bit of mint and lemon just to make them nice. He said you can just pick them up, pop them in the mouth. We've got some puff paste. We've got a roll over there. We've also got a pizza going on. Very roll interesting. Over. Sounds like a lot. And I know you like a bit of a roll over, didn't you, Chef? What about here? Well, we've got the linguine pasta. Avongole is, of course, the clams. That's going to be combined there. We've also got a goat cheese and shallot sauce, a bit of cream and mushroom going through there. And uh, the spinach is also going to be combined there. But a salad is going to be a huge, along with the uh, goat cheese, it's going to be just pan fried, I think, and put on top with a few sauteed mushrooms. Lots of interesting things going on. And uh, right yeah, now, I'll just chef, try then, and uh, stretch this a little bit. All right then, chef, get that nicely stretched. I don't want to get too much flour here, but it, it, we're underneath the lights. It just needs to be. All right. We need to just make make sure we've got enough. I haven't got enough for what I'd hoped we'd be able to do because you can never mm. tell with these things. Mm -hmm. There's no more in there. <laughs> but we'll. But I'm sure you'll be okay, it. chef. So we've got we're going to make a pizza, then we're going to make a turnover. Yeah. What we'll okay. do probably is now. We'll make mm. a smaller pizza in that case then. Okay. So we'll use that. Nice miniature pizza. So okay, so that's mm. for the pizza. We'll put that there. Okay. And if we do those, perhaps we'll use this one. Yeah. Perhaps we can just get two out of there. I'm not sure what we'll do with the trimmings yet, but we might find something to do with those. That's for one turnover. Mm. We just quickly push that a little bit farther. All right, lots of rings of uh, puff pastry going on yeah. here. So it, All right, and what will they be used for, Chef? One's going to be used for a turnover, the other's... I'm going to do two little turnovers. Yeah. And one for the pizza tart thing. So. Wonderful. Now, what about the old harizzo? Shall I come back and talk to you about those? Or Why are you don't you just open, open that for me first, please? OK, no problem. And I'll just have a quick look at this. We can talk about this if you like. It's mm. a... It's a pork spicy sausage, uh, Spanish, I think it is. Lots of paprika going through there, yeah. Lots of spice. It really is lots of flavour there, which is wonderful. There are a couple of kinds, I'm told. There's the cooked one and the raw one. So you've got to be yeah. very careful. This is raw and needs yeah. to be cooked. So that's actually okay. that's looking quite good for our pizza. I want to keep sure that's there. All right. And then we'll leave that here. Cook it like a normal sausage, ladies and gentlemen. Just cut that, that off. OK, flavor. Chef. What a Lovely. nice man he is. All right, a one uh, open. OK, Let's... how are you doing, young lady, OK? I'm good. You how... puni you're you punishing that onion. Do you want all, that, do you want all, all right, of it? Just looking yeah, just for... chop it all up. Yeah, there. just looking for your tin opener. Just, here we are. You're all right. One tin open for you. What a nice fellow you are. Right, there we okay, are. So we'll just get that. All right, I'll let you get on there, oh, Chef, God, and I'll come back and see you in a moment. Thank you, Chef. That's OK, we've got, perito, uh, we've got the uh, chorizo pizza going on here. We've got uh, some beautiful fresh clams here. I don't know quite what the chef's going to do with it. Tell us well, a little bit about clams, Von Gordon. Is it down in the south? Obviously very, very popular. Very, very popular in the south of Italy. Mm -hmm. And this one, it looks quite fresh to me, but then what you do, if you see that one is open, is yeah. anyone open? No, I see, don't when you want a Von Gordon open, there is never one. OK. But it's anyway, what do you to do? Mussels. I saw, see, ah, that's See, this is an open one. If you take it with a finger, OK? Yeah. And it starts to close by by herself. So yeah. that's when it's still alive. Otherwise, if he opens again, he's dead and throw it away. OK. OK? <laughs> that's it. Just, and, just, uh, just get it. You know, spaghetti, okay. linguine of vongole is very, very easy mm -hmm. because it's, uh, it's trying to get advantage of the fresh flavour of the uh, vongole. Mm -hmm. OK, that's okay. important. So I've got a little bit of olive oil here, the griddle pan for the um, uh, goat cheese. 
the pasta, we need to make sure whenever we cook pasta yeah. that is bollente. So hard boiling water with a lot of salt, lid on top, and okay. then it's done. All right, chef. Beautiful. Okay. Just turn that grill up for you. Yeah, okay, if you I'll can, just put because, the grill on there for you, chef, just in case I'll you're going to need that. Well, I need it for the gratin, so thank you very oh, much. Oh, lovely, okay. no problem at all. What are you getting up to there? You're Pesto sort of, sauce. Oh, but the kind of all beaten down. Uh, yeah. Why like this, Gino? Why? Because sometimes we put it in the old well, blender. Well, uh, I, th I think what we should... Uh, many people should know. Pesto is not only made with basil. Yeah. Pesto is, uh, is a way to make a sauce. Mm -hmm. Pesto means when you... When you paste somebody, so if I start to boom, 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 yeah. you know, I crush it in. You know, you crush it into somebody. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. what I'm pasting you. Okay, you're okay. Pe yeah. So then what you do? You get one of these things up. Uh, pestle, pestle, pestle and mortar. Mother. Pestle and what? Yeah. Mortar. Mortar. Pestle and mortar. Yeah. Pestle and mortar. Sea salt goes inside. Uh -huh. egg, olive, oil. olive oil. And then what you want to do, you want to paste everything together until you get a nice and a rastic look okay. paste. And what herbs have you got in there then? Parsley. Sarah? Parsley. Just parsley. Yeah. So it's yeah. a good old parsley pesto. Yeah. So, so what's nice the food easy. like at the, the school that you teach at then, Sarah? It's quite good actually. Yeah. Yeah, yes. It's quite healthy. Every week we have the menus, um, different menus, and sure. it's, quite, it's very healthy. And you're a good person to judge because you come from a family of. Cooks. cooks, that's right. Yeah, yeah. mom's a cook, brother's a cook. Yeah. And uh, did they teach you anything, or did you end up always washing up? Because I did wash them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the thing about yeah, it, isn't yeah. it. Yeah. People can they be a little bit be... temperamental. Just wash this, wash that. Yeah. You never learn true, anything. True. True. And uh, what about now? Do, have you uh, able Sorry, to? Sarah. Have you moved forward now? You're able to get into the kitchen and cook. Pesto, Sarah. Pesto, pesto. Yeah, pesto on yeah. top. Yeah, um, pesto, yeah. Pesto, I love cooking now. Pesto, pesto, pesto. Oh, lovely. So, do you know what about the difference between Italian and Spanish food? Well, it's very, very similar. The yeah. only thing that uh, um, Italian... I, I think in a sort of funny way, Italian is a little bit fresher than Spanish. Mm. Spanish, they use a lot I disagree. of chili. Uh, you disagree? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely. We've got a debate here. This is what we like, isn't it? You disagree right. because you're a woman. Oh! Yeah. No, that's always why disagree. I'm right. Whenever a man says something, always disagree. <laughs> but we're always right, don't we? <laughs> now, why do you disagree? Because uh, it, uh, ingredients are fresh in both countries. Yeah. You know, you cannot get fresher than in the Basque country. We have very, very fresh ingredients. Yeah, lovely. And you've got a lot of uh, Michelin star restaurants in, in San Sebastian. Yes, we do indeed. You yeah. say most in Europe? The place in Europe with mo most Michelin star per square meter. That's right. Wow. So are they cheaper then? Because you hear yes. you go to a yes. Michelin star restaurant, you're paying a lot of money. Yeah, but it's, you can afford it more there because there's so many of them. Yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, fantastic. OK, yeah. linguine. Any particular way you should cook this, chef? Well, the best way to do it is to make sure that the water is very hot. OK? Yeah. Then what you do, you open them up and then slowly, slowly, you just put them in, into the water. Twirl it around. OK, like that. We twirl it around. And the biggest mistake, never put the lid on top. OK. OK, you, you know, always keep it on and it starts to boil again. Uh -huh. Then you move them around and that's the way you... Lovely. And, of course, you're using linguine, a slightly flatter. What type of things, for instance, spaghetti linguine, should you just use them in all different sauces or... Usually the linguine are used for the uh, uh, fish-based sauce. Yeah. OK. Linguine means uh, a long, thin tongue. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a long thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's what it means, linguine in Italian. Okay, lovely. There you go. We're learning something every day. Mm -hmm. What do you call it in Spanish? Linguine. Linguine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back down in the green pepper kitchen with Chef Brian Turner. Let's find out how he's getting on. He's cooking down here with Kirsty. Kirsty's pretty. Oh, you're making hummus. a hummus. hummus. Okay, you've got yeah. enough olive oil in there then? Not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay, then. Did that's you all start chef yet? All right, then, Chef, that's all coming along. Tell us what's uh, going on here. So, then, we've chef. got the curry and the cassoulet going on here. Yeah. I've got, I've got onions and chickpeas and haritha in there. OK. This will be for the cassoulet. Mm -hmm. So we're putting plenty of tomato in here. Uh -huh. Keep it for tomato sauce. That's just a tad for the curry. OK. And we get to... Mm-hmm. Lovely. We make a little... Uh, where's my onion gone? Mm -hmm. you know? yep. We make a little sauce. How are you doing with that there, darling? It's OK. It needs some oil, I think. Yeah. OK, right, let's put some more oil in there, please. There you go. Here we are, my darling. And there then put are. this in here as well and give it... Tear that up. Okay. Put in there and then give that so it's What's nice that? and smooth. Lovely. So we just give it a different colour. We make it different. Mm. There we are. So have you ever made hummus before? Um, I've tried. Yeah. But unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully. It just didn't. That was always the first time, though, isn't there, Kirsty? Now, what was it like when you uh, first arrived at the school? Then were you, were, you, were you nervous? Yeah, it's quite hard to go mm. in and stand there at the front of the room with like 31 boys staring back at you mm -hmm. and waiting for you to that teach. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But I've been doing it since my fourth year now. Mm. And so a lot more confident then. Yeah, and now yeah. I'm ahead a year as well, so I have to give assemblies mm. to mm. 220 boys. Wow. So instead of standing there in front of 30, I now stand there in front of 200. With, and it easily delivered, yeah, just kind of let easy, it all flow out. Fine. And what about you and Sarah? Did you, did you meet at the school or was it...? Uh... Yeah, we, we both started on the same day. Mm -hmm. And uh, she clearly stood oh, out that... because she's... Very loud. <laughs> very loud. Very loud. Keep doing that, darling. Okay. Small and loud. That's great, though. Back yeah. to personality. We like that. Okay, all of this is cooking down. We've used the chickpea. Do you incorporate lots of chickpea into your cooking? Well, oh, most of my food is British food, and we don't use it too much. I love them. I think they're great. Yeah. And I love them on a Saturday night, Charlotte Darling, something like with my curry. I think they're Which, great. Yeah. So I'm really happy to have curried chickpeas. It's okay, great. lovely. All sorts of wonderful things going on here. We've got a little pizza going there. That's We've got the that. turnovers. What's on the uh, turn? What's Just inside? Sesame seeds on top there. And it's got tomato, chickpeas, onion, and uh, haritha in there. Yeah, can I have a very quick look, Chef? That's OK, very quick look, so I can, can't get in there. There we are. Now it's your fault. That's those, those are little <laughs> turnovers. They're just baking <laughs> off there, very <laughs> nice indeed. And the top shelf, we've got our That's pizza. Okay. It's, it's just baking it's off there, it's something it's really it's quite simple. All right, lovely. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll see how that goes. Right now, right, bit of, uh, scrape that out now. Let's mm. have a taste. Scrape it out. Right, I'll now. come back and that see you, there, Chef. Yeah. We'll okay. see how it goes. Let's Briefly back down here again, see how Gino's going on with the clams. Tell us about cooking them. Okay, clams takes very, very easily to do. So don't, you know, don't cook it too much ahead, otherwise they get rubbery. Okay. So as soon as they open like that, what I done, I put a little bit of white wine, as soon as they start to open, it makes a fantastic juice. Okay. Try it, yes. Anthony. Try it. Okay. Try, try the sauce and tell me what you think. OK, this is just a little bit of sauce with the... Just a little bit, like, a little bit of white wine, olive oil. Mm. You know, just And the to flavour sure comes that... through, OK. OK, and then it's ready. And then pasta goes into the sauce, because so sauce never goes on top of the pasta. Okay. It's always the pasta into the sauce, uh -huh. and it's done. OK, eight minutes to go. Now, what about okay. you uh, keeping fit, then? You guys like going off and jogging? Or what is, what, what yeah, is your... We, we go to the gym every Monday together, uh -huh. and we do sports uh, during the week, yeah. We love and it, it. And it keeps you nice and fit. We does, and also we look after ourselves a lot. Yeah. And we're very healthy. So, yeah. yeah. And tell, tell me about the difference. There you were in Spain, a beautiful part, mm. you know, the Basque country, you talked mm. about San Sebastian. Mm. And suddenly you completely gave it all up and came to live in England. Why? Do you prefer England? It's not a, qu a matter of preference. It's because I was teaching English in Spain. Uh huh. And as I always say that one thing is teaching the language, one thing is uh, getting to know the culture and living the culture, so mm. that's why I came here. And I came for a few months and this is my ninth year now. Yeah. Do you like it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It suits me, yeah. The pace of life is nice? It suits me, yeah, because I'm a morning person. Whereas in Spain, the school days are much longer than here. Sure. I, so. how, do you, I think they get two hours for lunch, the children, in sure. Spain, don't they? Sure. Because Can you not... imagine that? A two-hour lunch break? Especially if the kids came home and would drive you up the wall, wouldn't it? Eh? So, yeah, hey. many of them go home for lunch yeah. and then come back to school. So. I know. Incredible, isn't it? What about you, Gino? Did you used to uh, go home for lunch or did you eat at school? No, I used to eat at school because my school was based in a hotel. Yeah. Because I did a catering school. Yeah. So we used to have a good mm. hour and a half break. We used to cook, have a lunch, and then go back to study, which yeah, I thought it was fantastic. The only problem is you get a little bit sleepy. Mm. You know, you start to get tired because once the heat, you too, though, isn't the it? heat and then you have, once you have a, a, a big lunch, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I find it very difficult then to listen to the teacher. Uh, I find it difficult normally anyway. <laughs> but when I was... Uh, but that's why you have siesta, don't you, darling, eh? Yeah. I lost my thought. Ah, there mm. it is. Yeah. OK, and uh, okay, what I've done here, I grilled the uh, goat cheese. Yeah. OK, mm. because this one we're going to put on top of the rack. I put a bit of tomato paste into the uh, bongole. Uh -huh. OK, so we got a nice shallot, just a little touch of chilli, not too much. OK, sorry. Okay. That's OK. Then yeah. here, what I've done, mm -hmm. if you get me this one, you need one of these gratin dishes yeah. to do this dish, OK? So all the goat cheese is melting there with the cream, with the spinach, with the shallots. The spaghetti goes in there, mm -hmm. OK? And then, very simply, what you do, you yeah. just put in one of these dishes, OK? Yeah. Then, under the grill... Cheese and seafood, is that normally No, 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 this, this one has got no seafood at all. OK. This mushroom. one has only got mushroom, goat cheese and mm. spinach. Mm. And then, what are we going to do with this one? We just want to put a little pinch of uh, um, paprika on top. Oh, nice, okay. nice. And this is give a nice, beautiful colour. And there's and then so many different paprikas in Spain, aren't they? Yeah. Under Very the grill, you have and the lovely smoked-flavoured ones, and so there's such a joy. We use it? it a lot, yeah. Yeah. 
Beautiful. All right, all of that's going in there now. What I said. These are done. Down. Ainsley, what I've done here, I've got okay. some of the mushroom. Five minutes to go. Yeah. Raw mushroom, and I marinate them in balsamic vinegar and honey. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, because they start to kind of cooking. They get all the acidity for the balsamic vinegar. Yeah. So that you can eat them raw, nice and crunchy. Beautiful. Then the spinach here, uh -huh. okay, very simple. You squeeze them as much of the juice as you can, put them into, into a bowl. Don't overcook them. They have to be kind of a medium cook. Okay. We're going to squeeze a little lemon. Sorry, if you okay. can get a lemon. Watch, watch your cheese there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the cheese. Oh, the other cheese. Okay, the other cheese. What yeah, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just pick it up, yeah. Okay, Beautiful. and all these lovely gooey bits. I, lo I love it the way it is. All nice yeah. and crunchy, so it gives a lot of texture. Okay. Okay. That's Beautiful. Fantastic. Okay, we'll have a look at that. I'll what come back and see it. Back yeah. down here to yeah. Brian. Brian's pizza out the oven. We've got the old uh, frittata cook in there, chef. Beautiful. We've got our, it, that's it, a bit of chopped meat and the going stalk? in there. Oh, no, no, just take the stalk off, darling. That's okay. Is Dino giving yeah. Sara chilli? Uh, yeah, a little bit. He said just a hint. Just a hint of chilli. He said not too much. What, is there, is there a bad uh, story that you have to tell us about chilli and uh, Sara? <laughs> Four minutes to go, gentlemen. We went on a Balti... We went on a Balti tour around Birmingham. Yeah. Um, and Sara ended up eating the wrong dish, and she had a dish with lots of chilies, and she was... Oh, not very well for a long time. No, she just went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes her a little bit and hyper. she hasn't recovered yet. I know, but she's talking about someone who's already hyper, Brian. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Is that what the problem was? All right, then. Now, a bit of curry cooking down right, here. Curry good. treats, though, and uh, with the old chickpeas. And it's kind of nice that the chickpeas are just beginning just to crush down a little bit, Brian. Yeah. That's yeah, really lovely. Doesn't okay, mm. and here is the tomato. Well, we've got tomato cream. garlic cream in there just to make a bit of sauce to garnish because yeah. we've actually got that spare there. Uh -huh. Can you get rid of those breadcrumbs for me, Ains? Yeah, Thanks I'll lose it. those for you, Chef. No There's problem at all. All right, then all stir. sorts of things happening here now, really just cracking on with this. All right, three minutes to go now, gentlemen. Start thinking about how you're going to present your food and stuff like that. So, uh, Oxford's a nice place to live? Yeah, it's lovely. I've lived there about. Four years. Uh huh. Know my way around quite well now. And uh, what about uh, cooking and stuff like that? Do you do a lot of cooking, living at uh, living in your digs, or? Yeah, I I do. I enjoy it. Um, I live with two girls, and uh, we tend to cook. Sounds for each nice other. to me. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> we, we we always comfortable in the kitchen cooking. Um, no, my mum laughs because I've got no practical skills at all. Like, it wouldn't occur to me to put a lid on a pan to make it boil quicker. Ah, right. And then when I first went to university, I'd never really cooked, and so I didn't realise that when you cook rice, you had to put water in the pan. Oh, right. Yeah, and so uh, there I was with all my, <laughs> all my new pans, everything, and uh, it just burnt and stuck. So you put the rice in the pan, you just left it there, and it Yeah, and but it I, got put lid, I put a lid I on. I wish you hadn't You put a lid stock. on? You're supposed to put water in there, love. I put a lid on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian's just tipping out the old... Uh, to oh, they're the old frittata there, isn't it? Yeah, but this is a different frittata, cos okay. in the uh, north of England, when we make frittatas, yeah. you split it down the middle, it's easy to serve, <laughs> and then you put tomato <laughs> sauce <laughs> over the top. There you just go. Just some herbs, just chuck yep. any herbs you can. There we are, just grab some herbs there, chop those up and everything. OK, then this all coming together, very last minute here. Don't forget, we've got the turnovers there in the no, uh, oven that's going to be coming out shortly. We've got the frittata, very briefly, back to Gino. You've got the spinach right, right, there, right, the goat right. cheese nestled Let's on top. The um, bole here. Any cream in there, chef, or never? No, I... See, the way I prefer to do the pasta, mm -hmm. this is a very, you know, bongole, they've got a very unique, fresh flavour. Yeah. If you put the cream, I think it kind of... You know, you kill a little bit the bongole flavour. OK. Keep it nice and fresh, mm -hmm. you know, so you've got nice spinach, well-balanced. Because once you put the cream, kind of all the flavour they get together. I don't want that. I want mm -hmm. to get the bite of the spinach, I want to get the flavour of the bongole, a little garlic, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I don't... And it all comes out. Fair enough, that's and nice the, as a tip. And actually, the best way to do it, put the pasta into the sauce yeah. and allow the sauce to thicken into the pasta. OK. So you don't need to put any cream on All right, then. And that's bubbling away there. Look at that. We've got the spinach with that's the goat done. cheese and the mushrooms all bubbling away in the oven there. A little bit of fresh herbs to finish this off. Now, audience, once again, remember you are voting for what the chefs did with the ingredients they were given. Have they been creative enough? Have they Have given you one or two ideas? That's what we're looking for. All right, we're coming down to about 30 seconds now. Bring the wine. Cooking in, time. Yeah. Right, Gino's going to get this out. Oh, there we are. Is it going to happen? All right, you want that on the plate there? You're happy with that, chef? Beautiful. Everything coming together. The wine's there. It's always nice having a bit of a glass of wine, isn't it? All right, audience, any second now, I'm going to ask you to help me to count down. And here we go. Just, uh, uh... Ten, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop! Tricky! Wow, wow, it's all there to remind you of what our chef started off with. Brian Turner had three raw chorizo sausages, along with a packet of puff pastry, a tin of tomatoes, a tin of chickpeas, some sugar snap peas and a large onion. Whilst Gino De Campo started off with some clams, some dried linguine, spinach, button mushrooms, goat cheese and a couple of shallots. I wonder how our teachers will respond to this, eh? Oh, dear. Are you going to call him sir after this? No, you can call me Miss. Oh, <laughs> Brian, pick up your cutlery and have a go, Kirsty. Now, what about a name, mm. chef? Well, as, she's, as the lady's a teacher, I thought we should sort of use a, a question as a title. So, how do you make a Haritho turnover? Well, it's easy, you just go like that. <laughs> All right, so what Moving did you do? rapidly on. Yeah. Well, starting over here, the young lady made this hummus. So we had chickpea curry, lots of olive oil, That's lemon juice, salt, pepper, garlic, and got lots of herbs because it's green in there, which actually makes it quite different. Mm, lots of cheddar cheddar. works really quite nice. Thank you. This mm -hmm. is our little pizza come tart, tomato, olive oil, the haritho on top. Now, mm. it's just very simple, a bit mm. of soy sauce mm. just to season it up. I've got here just to pick with it, we had some bit of puff pastry left, so we pinned it out, sprinkle it with uh, sesame seeds and bake those. Sesame little twirls were wonderful, easy to do. We've got sesame seeds on here, we've got haritho, mm. tomato, chickpeas in there, a bit of garlic. We've got a little creamy tomato sauce just to make it nice over here. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, curry. Mm -hmm. The haritho curry works tremendously with chickpeas, mm. which is what the lady really wanted. Uh, over here, a little cassoulet, so that's baked in the oven, breadcrumbs on top. You could have some cheese in there, you could have lots of other things in there. We've got sugar snap peas with mint, lots of butter, you just... <laughs> <laughs> you just do that. And you end up looking and like then... a fish. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> And then this frittata, which traditionally you need to break in the middle, so that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes it comes out by itself. There okay, you go. Okay, fantastic. Now, what about you? What do you think? It's delicious, and you can really taste the chervil yeah. in that. It's just wonderful, it's just gorgeous, all of it. Lovely, enjoy. Thank well you. done, Brian. There you, you go, they're having yeah. a good time. Are you ready for your Von I am indeed. OK, pick up your cutlery and have a bit of a go. No, Chef, what are you going to call you. this? Well, I think, because we go quite mm. on with each other, it's going to have to be Wham Bam, thank you, clan. There you <laughs> are. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I know. Delicious, yeah. Very nice. Now, what did you do with your ingredients, Chef? Well, first of all, we made uh, a linguine con vongole, which is a little bit of mm. garlic, mm. Uh, mm. the vongole, yes. the spinach, uh, white wine, nice and easy, fresh flavour, mm. excellent. Then I made uh, a gratin with the goat cheese, mm. mushroom, shallots and spinach, mm -hmm. in a little bit of double cream, into a nice gratin dish, into the oven, 10 minutes, done. Mm -hmm. Then I made some vongole in a chilli tomato sauce, with a few mushrooms and a nice bruschetta. Is there enough switch. chili in there? Just a hint of chili? Very, very don't little. Don't even mention in there. that. No, don't no. even mention that. Okay. And here no, we no, got no. a nice. This I think is a beautiful salad because uh, Sarah made a beautiful uh, parsley pesto. pesto yeah. Which if we had the uh, pinoli, pineapple would be excellent. But this one is fine anyway. Mm -hmm. Then we got some spinach marinated in lemon on the mm. bottom. Then we got balsamic vinegar and honey mushroom, raw mushroom, and then a grilled goat cheese on top. Fantastic. What Fantastic. Do you that. It's very tasty. That is that is fantastic. Oh, this is exquisite. Exquisite. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. She says it's absolutely exquisite. It's good. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 our teacher delighted. What about our studio audience? Is it going to be a green pepper day or a red tomato one? Let's find out. So we ask them all to please vote now. And up they go. And well, this is a close one, isn't it? Very close. But there's one or two more. Red oh. tomato! There you go. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. There we are, my love. Oh, well done. You, there we are. And £100 spending money there for you. That's think... going for the Oxford Children's Hospital Appeal. That's very nice of you. Thank no, you very no, much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, you know. That was a bit close, wasn't it? Did you have a bit of a competition at the beginning? You guys saying who's going to win this? Yeah, I knew she'd win this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you better. never know. There's only two votes in there. Thank you so much for coming along. That's okay. And I had you... a lovely time. Why you go home with a lovely hamper? I know she's not sharing it. Uh, <laughs> Brian, always a pleasure, chef. Yeah, chef thank thank you. you very much indeed. Giant, giant, come and join us over here, Gino. 
and you too, Sarah, because it's time for today's quickie bag. So a very big thank you to our teachers, Kirsty and Sarah. Thank you. Let's see what uh, Ryan and Gino can do with this little lot. Oh, just looking here, it's a bit of a uh, Mediterranean influence in here, do you think, gentlemen? Well, we've got oh. a cucumber, we've got some anchovies, something that lurks around lots of people's larder. They don't quite know what to do with that. Flagellet beans, a red onion, some pine nuts and a red pepper. It almost looks lonely, that food there, but, boys, <laughs> how do you jazz it up to make it come alive a little bit? What do you think, Chef? Oh. It's a very good question, is that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, um... Well, we can make a little uh, pine nut uh, anchovy flagellet puree, like, like the hummus that we just mm. made, but a similar kind of dipping thing. Mm -hmm. We can uh, roast half a pepper, um, onions and flagellet beans in there. We can, uh, we can make a nice little... What about a little minted cucumber salad with a bit of yogurt, a bit mm -hmm. of fresh cream? And uh, then we've got the flagellet beans to mm. make into some kind of... A crumble, I suspect. Some breadcrumbs, some some of the nuts. Some Why are you butter. looking at me? <laughs> I don't it's... know. Well, you can do it next. It's okay. Are you, ah, you already some... telling me what to do? Indeed. Okay. <laughs> On with it. Okay, that's uh, Brian. Uh, Capitano. Uh, let's see what Gino comes up with. Well, the first thing that comes in my mind, although they're not all the right ingredient, mm -hmm. is uh, something in Italian we call the bagna cauda. Yeah which is a, a very thick way to make a soup. And we got the pinoli, which is great, because when you blend them, they get, it gets thicker. And then you do garlic bread, um, you know, like a soldier, and yeah. then you go in there, so we can make one of that. Uh, definitely, I think with this one, the way I don't like cucumber, mm -hmm. OK? But if there is a, the only way that I can eat it, if I, if I do ribbons and I marinate them in uh, lemon juice, balsamic vinegar, and usually what we do, we just put them on top of uh, crusty bread, mm -hmm. that one as well. Uh, we can bake, I guess, probably onion and just put some beans inside and, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, uh, ingredients do confuse our chefs, but, uh, they've given, uh, they've said what they're going to prepare. I wonder if they've impressed our studio audience enough. It's up to you guys. What chef would you like to see prepare today's quickie bag? What's it going to be, the green peppers or the red tomatoes? Will you all please vote now? And up they go, and... oh, this is a bit of a close one, isn't it, eh? What do you think, Chef? <laughs> hey, any idea? Yeah, no, I think... You think what? I think I'm all right. You think you're all right? No, <laughs> not you, me. Yeah, you better keep thinking, bra, because it's a Gino De Campo bag. Let's okay. get cooking! <laughs> OK, Gino, let's get cracking. Your ten minutes cooking time, Chef, starts now. OK, right, what let's we get on. For you? If you, I like the idea of the, um, can we do some, I don't know, what do you want me onion to do? rings, anything like that to go yeah, with the cucumbers? No problem at all. What do you want me to do? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I like, you said something about roasted peppers. We Crumble. Start, yeah, yeah, so you can have that. I'll, I'll give you half that back. OK. OK. So I get Lovely. Over. And what about you, Gino? Some oil. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a bagna cauda. Yeah. OK. I just put the oil on for you. And very simple, we're going to start with the onions. So I need to know, really, how many onions are you going to need? OK, well, Can I have uh, a bit of I'll, onion, I'll make very quickly... T I'm just doing the ribbons here for you, Chef. Brian, do you and need the... onion? I need a little bit of onion. I'll take a little bit of ribbons and make a little salad as well, if you've got any spare, Chef. Okay, you don't so need all no of problem at all. Or you, all right. can, you, you can dice it up, Brian. Here we are, Chef. I'll leave that there. Just dice it up, that'll be quite nice give in the me salad. The seeds. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> OK, pagna cauda. Tell okay. me about it. Pagna cauda is a very... Is a, is a northern Italian dish. Yeah. OK? And, like, every northern Italian dish, they used to do it when it was very hot... Well, sorry, when it was very cold. Yeah. And only that is also to um, preserve the food for a long time. So people, the, the people who used to look after the sheep and stuff like that, they used to go in the mountain. Oh, OK. So they used to take with them with a nice crunchy bread. The shepherds, almost. Yes, exactly. Yeah. OK, chef. And they, they always use it with the bruschetta, mm -hmm. OK? And the way to do the bruschetta, the Italian classic way, is quite simple. You get some nice crunchy bread like this one, OK? You drizzle with a little bit of olive oil on both sides. Mm -hmm. And it's important to do that because what's happening is the olive oil is going to make a nice crust around the bread and inside it's going to be all nice and tender. OK. OK, so you need a hot griddle. I mean, you can do this in the toaster or under the grill in the other bar. I think if you have a hot yeah. griddle like this one, yeah. it works much, much better. All right, okay. then. A touch of sea salt, or any salt that you got. Mm -hmm. okay. But sea salt is better. You don't want to use some of that sodium salt. That's not very good, no, is no, it? No, sea salt, I prefer sea salt. I use okay. sea salt. And then into the grill here, mm -hmm. both sides, and then we ready. 
Okay, then what no we do, we got a pepper here, which we're going to very quickly roast. And I think the quickest way to do it, okay, if you rub the pepper with some oil and some salt, then you put in one of this fire, okay, and yeah. just leave it there. So it's going to make all nice and... Uh, just cook, cook the outside it's of it. It's going to cook the outside, okay. it's going to make beautiful char grill flavor, which is fantastic. Beautiful. Do you, want some, uh, okay. do you want some garlic in there? No, I need just a little bit of onion, okay. which is great. Then I'm going to put some of the anchovies, some of the beans, and we've got a tin over for this. Okay, yeah, I'm sure we're going to find uh, one for you, Chef. Actually, before we do that, uh -huh. we need to marinate the cucumber. Okay, the way to do it, we get a nice beautiful ribbon like this, a little touch of balsamic vinegar, not too much, otherwise it's going to discolor completely the, uh, uh, the cucumber. Okay. Then we got some white wine vinegar goes in, okay? And all yeah. these vinegars is going to help to marinate and cook, you know, kind of cook the cucumber. Okay, so a bit okay. of white wine vinegar. All then right. some olive oil goes in there. And a touch of salt and pepper. Olive and nothing oil, else? Nothing else. Okay. We leave it like that, we marinate it, and then we use them later on a nice party plate. Okay. Now, we got the onion going here. I've got just, my pine With kernel. the onion, it's very important that you use pine kernels. Yeah. It makes a nice paste. Mm -hmm. So you put them in there. A few, I'll leave just a few for the bruschetta after. Yeah. Because this one is very kind of flowery. Once you start to blitz everything together, yeah. fantastic, with a nice smooth texture. What okay. For? And let this cook down. Now these you just turn over as you're going along. Yeah, yeah we just need now. to make sure that they're nice and crispy. Okay. And then it's fine. That, that, that will all come together. Now I'm doing okay. the. Uh, thank you very much indeed, chef. There you go. Let's just open and then this up for we you. We got the anchovies. This is a fantastic ingredient. Yeah. Everybody should have this in the because oh. you can do a lot of things. The oil. I'm going to use some of this in the banya powder. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to pick up the anchovies. And mm. what is going to happen when you put them into the oil in the onion, they start to melt. Yeah. OK, that's what you want. It starts to melt and it gives a natural salt to the dish. Oh, beautiful. And that is the traditional way. And it melts way. down, so you don't even notice it in the you cooking. It just notice. melts through. You don't notice. And it's great when you make a plate of pasta okay. or when you make a nice fish sauce. Mm -hmm. Put a few anchovies in the bottom and it goes fantastic. There you go. There's your beans. A few beans, please, yeah. Yeah, there we are. A few more of those okay. beans. OK. I need a few. Can I use all of this? Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, it's your bag. They call those the caviar beans, you know, the old flagellate beans, Brian. It is the... <laughs> OK, a bit of flour and a little bit of salt there, guys. I've soaked my um, onion rings here in a little bit of milk, OK? This is kind of doing it in the classic sort of French way to get those crispy onion rings, just tossing that in there. All right, and what you can do, if you want that extra crunch, you can return them to the milk again, just toss them a little bit more, and once again, back into the flour, and you can guarantee to get really crispy, crunchy onion rings. Four minutes to go now, gentlemen. Oh, don't okay. be ridiculous. I've got a, quick, a cookie question for you shortly. Yep. There we are. Let's pop those in there. And we're just going to pop those. I think in this case, okay. just to help the flavour going, because we haven't got a lot of vegetable in here, if you have one of these stock cube, of, you know, especially the vegetable yeah. one, for a portion of this, or just half of it, uh -huh. okay, keep it there, and it just kicks the flavour, helps the flavour to develop, you know, nicely. Okay, right. And then I've just got a, a touch of cream, and that's it. Lovely, just a little bit of cream. A quick uh, question there here this afternoon comes from Gerard Kennedy from Camberwell in London. Good afternoon to you, Gerard. He says, I'm trying to be healthy and wondered if it's better to microwave or steam vegetables. Steam them. Can you also tell me if microwave... Microwaving destroys more nutrients compared to steaming. You are very quick on that, Brian. Why I think steam them. I just think them. they're a nicer flavour. Sorry. It, sometimes it's good in the microwave to reheat your vegetables sometimes. I think if you're cooking them, there's no doubt to worry about it. Steam them. Okay. Nice and fresh and succulent. Steaming is your thing. OK, I three minutes to go. I have to agree with Brian, to be honest, because, you know, I don't use a lot of the microwave, but if you can naturally steam a vegetable, you know, by using a steamer or boil them, whatever you want mm -hmm. to do it, why are you using the microwave? Well, I, I, yeah, I can I understand that. It's just... But a lot of people say you don't lose that many nutrients. I think when you're boiling them in the water, then all the nutrients will naturally disappear into the water. So, say, if you put it in the microwave and you put water, a little bit of water into them, then it will go into the water. No, so but just if, you a put them in a li if you put them in a little dish in yeah. a steamer and steam them so all the juices go in there, then you can use that, make a little sauce. 
The great way to make them really healthy, of course, is to steam them in a little container. When the juice comes out, take the vegetables out, then put lots of butter and cream in and make a lovely sauce and put it over the top. <laughs> really <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I love it, a hint of garlic. All right then, chef. Lovely. Okay, this one, Ainsley, if you mm. can put them into a bowl with a few anchovies inside. Okay. Yeah, no and problem. then we prepare a beautiful bruschetta. Where's the anchovies? Can I just right, take a few of those? Yeah, of course yeah, you can. Yeah, of course you can. Just take a few of those. Been out fishing. Mmm. That's all I need. Do you like fishing, chef? Fish and chips. No fishing. F yeah, no. Fish is not your thing. My, uh, the, I used to go with my son, and it took me that long to set up to get ready that I was bored before we started. <laughs> Didn't make a lot of sense to me, but he loves it. It's the most one of the, well, probably the most popular sport in this country. Fishing, people don't realise that. You have to ask yourself what that proves, of course. Yeah. What about you, Gino? Do you like getting out there doing a little fishing? Madonna, I hate fishing. <laughs> My Good fishing, enough. you have to be there. It's always wet. <laughs> Waiting for this fish to get in the hook, which never happens. And then when you get it, most of the people put him back in the sea anyway. <laughs> What's the point of doing it? <laughs> you know, if you caught the fish, eat the fish. All oh, right, then. Yeah, it's lovely. Answer oh, the right, question. If that's, if that's your feeling towards it, I'm not going to complain about that. Well, do you fish? OK. Yeah, I don't mind. I find it very therapeutic when I go with a few of my mates. Just sitting down there, you can catch up, you can have a little bit of a conversation. And it's not always about, you know, catching something and putting it back in the pan, in, in the sea. It's the, it's just the sport. And a lot of them do that. OK, now we're cracking on here, ladies and gentlemen. In here, you can see the anchovies, a little hint of garlic. I've got just a few flecks of the old chilli flakes, along with the sesame seeds. All of this is going to go inside with our peppers. There we are. And Gino's got lots of lovely bread. OK, let's get this done now. Right, crispy, crunchy... Uh, okay. Rings, let's get this out. So we OK, 30 set, seconds uh, to go now, Gino. Let's get this out now, my man. I can there use this, go. right? Yeah, you can use anything that you want. So we got the bruschetta done. OK, let's get this out, Gino. We're not going to... 20 seconds. Come on, we really have to fly. We OK, here we are. Yours, this is mine. Ten, nine... Eight, eight in the middle. Seven, six, eight, five... Four, three, two, one. Okay, what about a name here? A name? Well, you better go nuts because this bruschetta is better. All ah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Fantastic! Yeah, all right. Tell us what you do with your ingredients, Chef. Well, look, I made the bagna cauda, which is a little bit of onion. Then we have the beans, the fragile beans goes inside. A little bit of vegetable That's stock, right. a touch of cream, water, mm. and you just boil everything together with a few anchovies inside. You blitz it, and then you put a few crouton on top. Mm. Then we made um, we made the marinated uh, um, cucumber in vinegar, salt, a little bit of pepper, and balsamic vinegar. Crispy onion rings and to go um, with that. Yeah, okay. and then the, the bruschetta, which is roasted red pepper with anchovies, pine kernels, a few sesame yeah. seed on top, on a crunchy bread. That's it. Absolutely beautiful. And what about your cucumber salad, Brian? Well, that's just simple. Just marinating a bit of salt, olive oil, mm. anchovies, and a few herbs on top. That's mm. really quite sweet. Bit of pepper mill. And, and the then lovely crumble. And then we've got the flageolet beans in there with some garlic, with some onion, a bit of olive oil, and then uh, breadcrumbs and the pine kernels on the top there. That'd be lovely with a roasted lamb, wouldn't it? That'd be fantastic, that, yeah. Great so. with the roasted yeah, lamb. Just the anchovies were also... Oh, that just melts into it, guys. All sorts of lovely recipes guaranteed here every mm, day on Ready, Steady, Cook. And if you want any of the recipes, please do check out CFAX or our website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash food. From mm. Brian, Gina and myself, see you soon on Ready, Steady, Cook. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>